Hi guys. Um, I've had some questions on steel and getting it tempered and annealing and most of it's been online through blogs and posts and when you type it up it seems a little bit more menacing or intimidating than it really is. Um, it's not that bad. Now working the steel. Um, shaping whether you're grinding it or if you're smithing it, beating it with a hammer, getting it near uh, to the configuration that you want. As you heat it, you, you're taking it above critical temperature, which to the eye would be a red to a cherry red. Uh, at critical temperature, it, metal loses its magnetism. You can have a magnet handy, drag it across a magnet, it'll either barely grab or will not grab at all, and you can work it to the near shape that you want. After you get it worked close to the shape that you want, you want to let it air cool. Um, just place it in on the bench, let it cool by air. Uh, it's better to maybe stick it in some vermiculite or some ashes or sand and let it cool as slow as possible. Once it does that, you've taken it down to, you've literally taken the temper out of it and uh, you can file it, you can brush it easily, and then you can get it closer by hand tools or mechanical methods to the shape that you want. Okay, once you've got your steel file shaped, you're not going to do any grinding. You're going to put your final edge on it and your polishing. Uh, you want to quench it. Um, you've got the steel to the level that you want. First, I would get some burnt motor oil is good because it's got carbon in it and everybody's got a little bit of burnt motor oil they can probably get their hands on. If not, you can use any kind. You can use salad dressing if you wish. Um, Preheat your oil, uh, get you a container and get you another piece of metal. Get it very hot, stick it in there and bring that, temper that oil temperature up a little bit. Uh, it's not good to use just ice cold oil or winter time just been sitting out in the yard. You want to bring the temp up some. Uh, again, you will put your metal in a, under a torch, under um, anything you want. Uh, acetylene is good because it brings it up quick and to a high temperature. Um, a fireplace, get it above critical temperature, which does not stick to a magnet. Um, then apply the red hot steel directly into the oil. Move it around until it comes to the same temperature as the oil. Bring it out. Run a file across it. If the file skeets over it, you've accomplished your mission. If it hasn't, it may not be oil quenched steel. You may have to try water. Same method, you'll take it to above critical temperature and you'll quench in water. And again, put your file across it and the file should skeet right across. Now that your steel is as hard as it can possibly get or you can get it, now we need to temper. Um, I'm going to show a chart in a minute on uh, temper colors and they start at light yellow, straw, blues and purples and they go through there. And everybody's seen that when you put a torch to something how it changes colors. Those are called the temper colors. Now that you have the steel as hard as it will get, you need to bring it back down to where it will hold a good edge but it still retains some springiness where it will give. Knives are done this way. Um, and a happy medium to where it will contain the edge. You can leave it as hard as you want, but if it stays at really hard, you're going to chip or break it. If you bring it too far down the temper, um, it will be springy. It won't chip or break, but it won't hold an edge very long. Um, tempering can be done in a conventional oven because it's in, within its ranges, uh, 400, 450 degrees, depending on what you want to play with and what level of hardness you're looking for. Um, the method I use is I use a normal propane torch. Uh, it's not as hot as oxyacetylene and I can watch it a little bit closer. Um, the old guys and, and would get another piece of metal above critical, bring it out and then set the steel that they're tempering across the top of it and watch as the heat exchange to the piece that they're working on and the temper colors ran through it and then they would quench it and then they have what they wanted. Um, if you're going to temper in an oven, you can stick it in the oven and you can run it four, four and a quarter for an hour, bring it out and look at it, and it will have the entire piece will have that color upon it and you've accomplished your mission. And 
if you watch it'll darken hopefully this won't take forever all right right there is straw and I'm going to continue to heat the bottom I'm going to run the heat up the tip it's changing to blues and purples and if you notice the straw is running up the nail See the purple and the straw is going up. You can slow it down when you get near it and let the transition slowly take take place. I'm gonna continue to heat the bottom. Alright, I'm gonna stop with the heat right there. And we'll watch the tempering. The top is turning straw and the purples and the blues are widening so the heat is dissipating it's a little bit slower process where you can keep up with it and now I'm gonna quench it stopped that's the quick method to do it and the tip is the tempered part this is untempered now literally it would bend and this would be harder the file was able to dig in pretty good here fairly well here but hardly at all here this is harder alright the metal is very hot for is the temper colors to come on now turning straw a light straw color one word of caution guys I want to make to you is if you're working with galvanized or zinc metals bolt screws pipes nipples anything that's got galvanization on it welding this stuff and torching this stuff creates a gas that is deadly it has killed welders and it has killed smiths if you do, you need to have extreme lung protection and be in a very ventilated area. I do not advise it. Leave that for the pros. Keep in mind guys, it's all in what you want to do. The steel that you get, rebar, um, any of the square round stocks that you buy in bulk, at the uh, box stores, that's mild steel. There's very little, if any, carbon in it. You can get it hard, and if I'm going to use it for something and I want it as hard as possible, I'm going to anneal it, work it, and then I'm going to quench it, and I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to temper it. It's as hard as it'll ever get, and it won't hold an edge. Um, spring steels, truck springs, anything that has a use of spring. Truck springs are great. 
Um, they're pretty good, but they're designed to be springy, to return. They've got some carbon content in them, and they're good for chisels and mile tools, hose, things that you're going to put a mild edge on, and it's going to have a good long life because you can take them to their hardness and it stops and they don't get rock hard. A good general steel for making a tool and everybody, a dull file, any old file material is high carbon. You can anneal it, work it, get it where you want it, and then just follow through through the tempering processes and take it to the level of hardness that you want and it's great stuff. Make knives out of it, uh, chisels, anything you want. Um, my two cents. I'm not an expert, I'm not a pro, I'm just uh, passing on what I've learned so far and thanks. Come again.